Katarina Johnson Thompson, Nafi Tiam, Tiam on the left, Katarina Johnson Thompson on the right. What a great duel that could and should be. Well, these multi event athletes always look so sullen as they walk to the line in the first event, and it's not because they're not happy or they don't enjoy the moment. They know they have a full two days of competition looming ahead of them, and at times it can be a little overwhelming. I know that 10 events used to just really scare me, but once I got out there, once I got moving, and I just took one event to the next to the next and started marking them off, I felt much better. But that walk down that long tunnel can be very daunting. Better coming out, the bronze medalist from two years ago, getting a nice little burst of fireworks to open her campaign. Mordens, the European under-23 bronze medalist from Belgium. Really good long jumper, 6.51. She'll hope to get some good points in that one. Katarina Kacheva, eighth in the world indoors back in Portland three years ago. There or thereabouts in the hunt for the podium positions on the European stage. Geraldine Rufstahl, the 21-year-old from Switzerland, European under-23 champion. Such a fine talent. Really looking forward to see what she's got here. Uster Vegel from the Netherlands, fourth in the European under-23s. Looks a little nervous, getting herself poised and ready. And last but by no means least in lane eight, the Katarina Voronina, the Asian champion from Uzbekistan. Well, it's a good heat, this one. Veta Dan in lane three has got plenty of experience and with a PB of 13.29, she's one of the quickest over this distance in this heat. Well, this is where she needs to make her hay, so to speak. Only seven events for these women. We talked about it coming over here. You cannot stumble in seven events because there's just not enough events to come back. You can stumble in the decathlon because you can make up some points in, in the number of events, but not here in the heptathlon. Fetter goes in two. That's uh, Mordens. Kacheva, 13.05. So in terms of PBs, she shades it in this one. Rustal, 13.76. That PB coming this year. Who's the bagel? 13.63. She's also in PB shape. And Voronina is yet to go inside 14 seconds. So this could be tough for her. Let's see what Vetter's got. The former European champion, the World Championship bronze medalist from two years ago. She's on the far side in lane three. Kachever in five, two outsider. has got a lifetime best of 13.05. First instalment. Seven moments of drama in their hunt to become heptathlon world champion for 2019. Voronina will be nearest the camera in lane eight. Seven. Oh dear, oh dear. Now, quick clarification here for those of you thinking that we're about to say goodbye to an athlete. The rules are a little fairer for the combined events athletes, Dan O'Brien, and it's only right that that is the case. One false start is allowed. It was uh, clear that Mordens of Belgium just allowed the occasion to get the better of her, and I, I fully agree with this rule. I mean, actually, there was a tiny little wobble, Dan, from Kacheva in the lane next to her, just the merest hint of a twitch, but it's really good that there is room for for one error in uh, multi-events. Well, I like the rule and how they changed it, one and done in the open events, one awarded to the field here in the multi-events, and then the athlete who has, a, who has a subsequent false start will be eliminated. But now everybody will be careful to stay in their blocks on this one. Nobody in this field can afford another false start. First heat, Seven. women's 100 hurdles, heptathlon. <laughs> This time they are safely away, a little cautiously. Better making good progress on the far right of picture. Kachava coming through now to put her under a little bit of pressure. Vetter's clattered a couple of those barriers. That's why Kachava's come through for first. Vetter second. Oosterbegel went well on the near side, 
Well, that's a solid start from Kashiva, who was uh, not too far away from the podium in the European Championships. Veta probably would have won that, but she clattered the last couple of barriers. And having started really well, the Dutch woman just got a little bit untidy towards the end. Well, there is certainly a fitness element in the 100 meter hurdles as well as the 110 hurdles. You've really got to work hard on those last couple. You snap into your hurdle position, snap off of that hurdle. Vetter was on her way to a really fast time, but it was Kacheva who was just steady in the middle of the track. You get a chance to see the, the replay. It was Kacheva who just was in better posture. Posture and position is so important over these hurdles. Look, very, very even start. But that first false start is going to get everybody sitting in those blocks just a little bit longer than they would like. There you see better on the far side in the orange uni. She's doing a really good job at this point of using her arms. You hit a couple hurdles, but you see better gets flat footed. While Kachiba does not, you fall down into your flat feet and it's very difficult to get back up on your toes and continue to sprint. Nice job there. Head and shoulders square, run all the way through the line. And, you know, we get a chance to see the difference between these multi-event athletes as we get into the open hurdles as well. The open hurdle women are just so much quicker. They're world-class sprinters running over hurdles. These are good athletes running over hurdles. Well, we had four women getting over 1,000 points there. Kachiva takes it from Vetter, who lost a a tenth or so with those mistakes towards the end. Oosterweegel was third. Ruchstahl, the other athlete, coming home over a 1,000 points. Morton's with a PB after the false start at the beginning. That's a good recovery from her. OK. Now we once more focus on the heptathlon. The other athlete in this one, we're going to be talking about Johnson Thompson against Anafi Tiam. Nadine Burson, world indoor champion a few years ago. She'll be starting uh, in lane four. But all the attention on the two lanes, six and seven. Johnson Thompson and Tian side by side at the beginning of their quest for glory. Fascinating. That's Nur Viditz, third in the World Student Games a couple of years ago. She's in PB shape for the 100 hurdles at the moment, and she looks relatively relaxed. PB for her Belgian counterpart in the first heat. Ivona Dadic, world indoor silver medalist, European bronze medalist. She's a fine, fine hurdler at 13.36. Now Nadine Burson, the former world indoor champion, close to the podium in Beijing when she was fourth. Verena Prina, world student games champion, the second of the two Austrians in this one. 6,591 points in Rattingen. Now the world indoor champion, the Commonwealth champion. Moved out to France, she's with Mayer's group, and she's become a different athlete. Now she does have the composure for the big stage. And so too does the reigning world European and Olympic champion, Nafi Tiam. One of the all-time greats, could she get close to Carolina Clough's European record? And Annie Kunz, Pan American silver medalist. 12th in Goxis, just over... 6,150 points. OK, very little to choose between the personal bests of Katarina Johnson-Thompson and Nafi Tian, side by side in their quest for World Championship glory. A fascinating starter in this three-course service of sporting drama over seven events. The Britain in six, the Belgian reigning world champion in lane seven. Oh, Johnson Thompson's face there was a picture of concentration. Kunz has gone out well, and that's put the two favourites under a little bit of pressure. The American performing really well, and now Katarina Johnson Thompson coming through. Good run by Johnson Thompson. 13.08. That is a huge, huge lifetime best, and she cannot believe it. It is the perfect start, the dream way to begin her quest to wrestle the world title out of the hands of Nafi Tiam. What a start. Wow. 
You saw the stress and the pressure on both of their faces prior to the start of that race. I didn't know if we were going to get a smile out of either one of them. They both looked almost nauseous just because they waited for this and waited for this in the anticipation. They just wanted to get out there and get this thing started. But it was that finish by Johnson Thompson. She was very even with Annie Coons through five hurdles, and then she just took over. It almost looks like she hit another gear over hurdles six and seven, and she closed this thing out 13.08. Absolutely fabulous. Personal bests by the first three. Johnson Thompson, Preener in second, Kunza in third, and it was the American who got out quickest on the far left of picture, nearest the camera. There you what a start by the American. Well, it really was a great start. Annie Coons training down in San Diego at Chula Vista Olympic Training Center. But look at this on the seventh hurdle. It was Johnson Thompson. And I don't love her arms here on these last through hurdles, but man, she really accelerated through very well. She kept her momentum going, and that's so important in these hurdles. There you see Nafi Theum off to her left. I'd love to see her stand up a little bit more. She's a tall girl, and she tries to get small. She needs to stay tall. But there you see Johnson Thompson striding to the line. Wonderful time. Great reaction as well, but not a bad time for Nafi Theum as well. 13.36 ties her season best. Well, it's game on in this battle for gold. And that is a huge, huge psychological boost for the Briton, who's coming in here as the main challenger to Nafi Tiam's title defence. Real disappointment for Dadic, just feeling her hamstring going. The European bronze medalist from three years ago, and she was in quite a bit of distress just towards the end having worked so hard and kept her season going into October her quest comes to an end the women about to be introduced for this third heat Odil Ahunwanu will be the first athlete coming out for Benin national record holder for them African champion last year Erica Bugard with uh, 6,663 points, one of the year's best performers. She is quality, that came at the US Trials when she beat uh, Kendall Williams. Quite a tight competition, those two were a class above the rest in the US Champs and you were there, Dan, for that one. Bogard's got a chance uh, over the next couple of days, hasn't she? Well, she really does, she really excels in the speed events. Her sprinting and jumping is right on point, and she is a world-class hurdler. Ahunwan, who goes in two. There is Erika Bugard, fifth in the world indoors last year, 12.78. Absolutely brilliant hurdler. She'll look to make full use of that uh, speed here. Maria Huntington, she sounds British because she's got a British dad and a Finnish mum. She's flying the flag for Finland here. Selena Ndama, European indoor bronze this year. 12.77. She might be able to put Bugard under pressure if she can run close to that time. Martha Koala, second in the African Championships twice. Really good long jumper as well, Koala. And then Kendall Williams, another very, very talented hurdler. World junior champion in the 100 hurdles in 2014. 12.82 at her best. And Shari Hawkins, that's a nice... Uh, Sweet wave from her, quite modest. Third in the US champs, fourth in the world student games. Okay. Oh, we saw a lifetime best for Katarina Johnson Thompson just outside 13 seconds. A Bugard here in lane three with a best of 12.78. And Kendall Williams, her compatriot in lane seven with a best of 12.82, could really get the pulses racing here. They're not far off being world-class hurdlers in their own right. An early opportunity for them to get a huge total on the board in this heptathlon competition. A little bit of wobbling in the blocks, but it's... Uh, 
Kendall Williams has got out really well here down the bottom end of your picture. And Erica Bugars have been left behind here. What a run by Williams. 12.59. That is absolutely outstanding. Now, bear in mind that the best we've ever seen in a heptathlon is 12.54. And that was Jessica Ennis Hill en route to Olympic gold in 2012. It's been rounded down to 12.58. That is one of the best hurdles we've ever seen from a heptathlete and a massive, massive lifetime best for Kendall Williams. No wonder she won the World Junior title. That was unbelievable. Well, this is one of her specialty events, but she was just locked in and absolutely on it. This Mondo surface, you've got to be active all the way. As you come out of the blocks, you can't wait for this track to help you get your strides. You need to continue to drive your feet into the ground. But watch Kendall Williams. She's second from the inside. Boom, she just blast out of there but look how on top of that run she is she doesn't get she doesn't get flat footed she doesn't get behind on that run she's right over that lead leg she stomps it down and continues to run to the next hurdle you see Bugard second from the right she ran a good race but she's just a little bit flat footed she did run 1303 but an outstanding run and time for Kendall Williams look how quick she is with that trail arm well let's put this into context that is not out of the bounds of possibility that 12.58 could make the World Championship final in the individual event. That's how good a performance she's just produced. And I mentioned it was just a few hundred slower than Jessica Ennis Hill in the London Olympics. It's a championship best. No heptathlete has ever hurdled quicker than that. And we, of course, go back to 1983 and Helsinki. No wonder there's a look of delight on her face. That's world class. There's no other way to describe it. Well, I'm not sure that's a good thing for the heptathlon because if Kendall Williams runs any faster, she's going to want to just run the hurdles and get out of this heptathlon. But she is off to a fantastic start. 1,189 points. Good reaction for her. That put her in first place, and she is an outstanding high jumper. That's a hotel, by the way, in the background. I've, I've been up there. Absorbed. Amazing. Must be a great view. <laughs> Well, this is a great view for Kendall Williams. 12.58, a championship record, one of the fastest we've ever seen. A massive 1,189 points. And Dame ran really well for second. And Erica Bugar just a shade outside 13 seconds. Koala, by the way, Burkina Faso, set a, a national record with 13.05. How about this? Kendall Williams sitting on top after one event and Dame in second Bugard is third although she'll be a little disappointed her compatriots so far ahead Katerina Johnson Thompson will be delighted with her PB and Nafi Tiam with a little bit to do after the first event Dardic not managing to finish so we've had one casualty Nadama she's in group B of the high jump 171 Oh, gives it a little tickle, but it stays on. We've got two groups going. Kendall Williams, I still can't get over that 12.58 hurdles. Second attempt here. Yeah, that was good. Just needed to come back. Safely over 177. Just the one failure so far. Kendall Williams, third attempt. This for 180? No, not to be this time. A little bit disappointed with that one. Williams was leading coming in here after that unbelievable performance in the 100 hurdles. Erica Bogard could certainly be amongst those to feature for the medals if she has a good campaign. Oh, that was effortless, wasn't it? That was so good from the American. She performed really well in the US National Champs, taking that one ahead of Williams with 6,663 points. They were a class above all the rest in that heptathlon in the US Champs. Third attempt now from Mandana. And Dan O'Brien really looking forward to the decathlon and heptathlon unfolding 
on this opening day. Johnson Thompson's opening attempt. I think this is 183. Yes, it is, 183, and she's over on a first attempt. Not, not the Theum had a miss. Excuse me, this is Johnson Thompson on a first attempt there. We've had a number of misses. Erica Bugard, it took her three to get over 177, and it took her three to get over 180. Now we're at 183. And this is the second attempt for Nathi Theum. And she looked a little ragged after sitting around for such a very long time. On her first attempt, she wasn't even close. And that's just an athlete has to completely warm up. She waited so long into the competition. All right, KTJ here. One miss at 1 meter 86. We'll see if she can find her groove. A lot of stuff going on down there in that part of the track. Oy, it didn't it didn't look like her best takeoff and she doesn't love it either, but it was good enough to get a make there. Things are getting tense. You know, I see a little tension both in the eyes of Theum and KTJ or KJT, excuse me, Katrina Johnson Thompson, but tons of tons of hip height. Very good clearance. She doesn't come at the bar very, very fast, so she has got to be active off the ground. She gets a little lazy off the ground. She's not gonna bounce right over that. This is Annie Coons from the United States, and she's over 186. Excuse me, that was 182. We were looking at the other, we were looking at the other pit. Yes, that was the other group. And now our attention turns to Nafi Tian, the defending champion. Bear in mind, this season, she has jumped 202. She should be comfortable at these heights. Well, she just can't find her line right now. She's really attacking the bar very well, but you hear that last step just go thud. Erica Bogard, she's had a couple of third attempt makes. Everybody's struggling with this last step that we talked about it in the open high jump. This this surface is so fast everybody gets to their last step really quick and that was just a thud and you absolutely heard it third attempt make it her second bar third attempt make it her third bar and just not a chance on that one this is Johnson Thompson for 189 pretty good looking card there a make a miss and a make you want to spare as many jumps as you possibly can. It's all about time management and conservation in the multi-events. You do not want to be up around 12, 13, 14, 15 jumps in a heptathlon. Give me 10 good ones, give me 11 good ones, and she's over. She seems to have been able to find a nice little groove. And when I say a groove, leaning into the middle, running your turn, and being quick off the ground with no hesitation, boom, she rises her shoulders, hips and the legs follow, the head and the shoulders, nice hip height, nice knee height. She's getting out of it a little bit early. She'll be able to go higher, I think. Tian has seen her great rival in the battle for gold go clear. Second time of asking, 189. Oh yes, that was better. It absolutely was, and you saw what I saw there. She got her spacing right. She needs to have the distance from the bar, her takeoff position right, and she's finally getting into a little bit of a groove as the bar goes up. We'll see her definitely at a couple more heights, but you think about what she jumped in that heptathlon, 202. That's good enough for the silver medal here in the open competition. It was also a world heptathlon best now bugard you really feel she could be a factor especially after that great performance at the u.s champs well over 6600 points well her hurdles was just very very average she needs to high jump well she is a good high jumper but just not quite as consistent as theum and thompson she certainly has the ability she won the uh, u.s indoor high jump title 
three years ago, came back the following year, won the U.S. Indoor Long Jump Championship, and then got away from the in individual events and came back and won a multi-event championship. She really wraps herself around that bar. You just see that her bum, her hip height is just in the slightest wrong spot, a little too far forward. She needs to drive a little bit more with those arms. But she's got a great temperament for the multi-event. She never gets too up. She never gets too down. She's always in work mode. And that's what you have to do in the multi-events is just figure things out. Make the adjustments and figure things out. Well, she's asking the crowd just behind that high jump bed to get involved. Last chance, 189. No, not to be. So in this Group A, it remains Nafi Tian and Katarina Johnson Thompson as the only athletes over 189. Bugard bows out. Her best that second time clearance at 186. Well, and she only jumped 189. Well, not only, but she did jump 189 earlier this season. So that is not a bad result for her. Only three centimeters lower than her seasonal best. But on Group A, then there were two. The two best ones in the competition here. They're outstanding high jumpers, and we've seen this before. We've seen this duel in the high jump before. Johnson Thompson, a first attempt make it 89. I think that gives her an enormous amount of confidence. A second attempt make for Theum, who looks like she's beginning to get into a better rhythm. Well, Nafi Tiam, after that 202 in Chalons, must realize in the back of her mind, this is one of the events in which she needs to dominate, because if she can get anywhere close to 202, it could give her a, a crucial advantage over Johnson Thompson. There we go. A little bit heavy on that takeoff, but she stretched it up nicely. And you saw on the leaderboard after the first event, she was clear back in seventh position. She relies on the high jump and the long jump to make those big leaps back into the mix. And when you can jump two meters, you can be in 10th or 11th position and jump back into the top three after the high jump. So can she match the defending champion and the European champion? in going clear at 192 at the first time of asking. It looked quite crisp from Johnson Thompson over 189. A young woman who's moved her whole life over to France and it seems to be paying off. Looks like she cut her turn off just a little bit early. She needs to lean into the middle, continue to, continue to run that turn. She gets to the end. And she just hasn't completed running that turn quite yet. But, you know, I look down there and I feel for these young heptathletes because this is such a different atmosphere than you get at other multi-event competitions. You go to Gotsis, you go to the Dekastar meet in Talant, five, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand people dedicated to your attempt. They're clapping rhythmically for you. They're in the competition with you. And it's it's very strange out there in the, in the field events. You just feel like you're out there completely by yourself. It's tough to connect with your coach because he's miles away in the stands. And I and I think I I think I told you guys that when I was down there for the for the individual events. And you can feel that in the discus. You can feel that in the discus and certainly here in the high jump. They need to find a connection, get get a little crowd behind them and feel at home. Second attempt. The world indoor champion, the Commonwealth champion, the European silver medalist. Fantastic win in Gotsis earlier this year. It's a mecca for combined event athletes. More than capable of this, better. Oh, they're laying on a bit of a show here. KJT and Nafi Tian, the Briton and the Belgian, slugging it out here as the rest wilt in Group A. It's one of the best events for both of them. Johnson Thompson has gone 198 at her lifetime best. Well, we're not quite up to that just yet, but these two are delivering the duel. 
we were hoping it would turn out to be. It's a long walk over there to your coach, but I love the interaction. In multi-events, you rely on your coach so very much. You just can't get to the level that these athletes are without some real solid coaching. And there you see a, a little ice bag for Nafi Theum. That's a good idea. Keep your keep it standing by. You get a little hot down there. But I, it's very comfortable down there. You think about the conditions outside, and then those athletes come into here and even sometimes need an extra layer because you get chilled by the air, by the air conditioning. Their seasons so far have been pretty interesting. Johnson Thompson won Gotsis, PBs in the 110 hurdles and the javelin, and her overall score beat that which she's ever done before. Tian, world heptathlon best 202 from that great meet in Chalance in June, and then a national record indoors, 653 in the long, and 686 winning the Birmingham Diamond League, an event in which KJT was just a single centimetre behind her with eight with uh, 685 and she hadn't jumped that far for four years so it's hard to see where the differences will come they've both in their own ways had excellent seasons so far well they both cleared respectable heights right here they'll move on to the shot put and then the 200 meters but i just think ahead that long jump is going to be spectacular tomorrow every bit as much as this high jump she looked like she was out just a little bit, but she's creating more distance. As the bar goes up, she needs to fudge her step out just a little bit. But all these athletes, you get one good jump, one bad jump, just finding and adjusting to that speed. I think she just went to her back just a little bit early. But I think it shows you as well, to be a world-class heptathlete, you've got to have world-class events, individual world-class events. We saw a world-class sprinter in or hurdler and Kendall Williams to start this whole thing off. We're seeing a couple of world-class high jumpers. Both these young ladies have world-class marks in the long jump, and certainly, certainly that 800 meters for Johnson Thompson can can be qualified as world-class. Yeah, she can usually finish off with a 208, 209. By the way, 192 means Tian and Johnson Thompson have picked up 1,132 points. This. 195 would see them add a handy extra number it would take them up to 1171 so this at well over 1100 points shows you the quality we're seeing here in this second event oh yes oh yes indeed doodly kjt 195 and she will be absolutely delighted with that. It's not a PB, but it's getting close. And remember, she smashed her personal best in the 100 meter hurdles. What an attempt this is turning out to be against the defending champion. There wasn't a centimeter to spare on that jump. She really played it close to the bar there as Theum tries to answer. And she's over. I think we got a smile there. Just a bit, just a bit of a smile. <laughs> well, this is brilliant from both of them. Nice arm drive. She waits just a split second. I think she went to her back too early on the one before where she missed, but she knows she has to drive up before she can go into her layout. Still trying to adjust her step just a little bit. Everything's constant adjustment. Even when you have a successful attempt, you get instruction from the coach and you try to make those adjustments. The bar now up to 198. This would give her a massive 1,211 points. Nothing to separate the Britain and the Belgian here. Everybody else has long since finished in this competition. And it's, it's a real treat for the combined event fans who are packing their way into the stand immediately behind Tiam's back. 198. Well, she's certainly given it a good go. That was 
You can see it was a little bit more effort on the run. She's pushing just a little bit harder. She's driving up. She's got to wait on the top as that bar goes up. There needs to just, you need to hesitate. You need to be patient up top. I'll tell you, this young lady, she's just been fabulous for the last couple of years, and she's handling the pressure of being the favorite very, very well. And you've got, you've got people all over just expecting you to win by a mile. And after a while, you just you get done, you, you get tired of talking about it. I was I was the favorite for years, and and you know you go into these competitions, everybody's trying to get you. So I can see how she is under the microscope and a little bit of pressure. Do you get used to that, Eva? Well, you do get used to it, but what you end up doing, you end up secluding yourself in your in your hometown, secluding yourself on the track with the people that you enjoy training with, and that's exactly what she's done. You don't spend a lot of time in, in the major cities. You go to your track meet, you get in, you get you fly home, you don't do a lot of sightseeing. But that's how you prepare for these big competitions. What does a boxer do when he wants to get ready for a fight? He goes to high altitude and hides out for eight months. Or eight weeks, excuse me, not months. <laughs> Johnson Thompson knows how big this would be. PB in the 100 hurdles and that would have been a personal best equaling jump at 198 and do you know what's interesting about this competition i've watched her for a few years she looks and this hasn't always been the case dan she looks like she's enjoying this tia second attempt 198 Listen for the reaction if she does it. She's just going past that jump just a little bit. You need to con need to convert that vertically. Just not hitting it well to take her up. It's taking her into the bar. And if you're going to jump like that, you need a ton of space out front. I think she's got her spacing right. She just needs to work up a little bit more and be patient. But the jumps come fast and furious when there's only two people in the rotation. Johnson Thompson, three failures. This would level or equal her personal best. And remember, we're now talking about potentially in excess of 1,200 points after a huge PB in the 100 hurdles. Very, very short run-up in contrast to Tiam. Can she go as high as she's ever done before? No. Just didn't quite look like her heart was in that one. She will have one more attempt. If I were her coach, I would tell her, don't try so hard. She looks like she's trying to really try hard. You need to go back to the last bar that you made and repeat it. Don't try to do anything different. And as athletes, we want to give better effort. We want to stomp our foot and jump harder when that's not the solution. The solution is to replicate what you just did and just little things, it's little things. Wait on the top just a little bit more. Be a little snappier with your arms. Make sure your knee drive is there. I think Nafi Theum came into the high jump, though, expecting to jump higher than Johnson Thompson. And if they both jump the same height, this would be, I think, a, a small victory for Katrina. And when you build on top of that, the big performance from the Britain in the hurdles, an early edge to her. But Nafi Tian has other great events to come. But this is certainly one of them. Just a reminder, if you're joining us, we're watching the defending champion, the Olympic champion, the European champion, who has this year jumped 202. Last chance, 198. Didn't really ever look on, did it? All night long, she looked like she was struggling to find the groove, struggling to find 
where she can place that last step. And when you're not sure, you go up there with a little bit of doubt, and doubt will never get you over the bar. And I think everybody is hoping for that 202 or that two meters even from her. And that performance just wasn't there tonight. But the good thing is, is she's got good events coming up. She can make up those points someplace else. If we see that stand outstanding long jump that we saw just a few weeks ago, that could easily make up for this. Well, imagine if they both replicated what they did in that Diamond League and go over 680. Right. Johnson Thompson. Everyone else has finished. One final chance to equal her lifetime best and secure over 1,200 points. It's already been a good event for both of them at 195. This for a little psychological edge over the defending champion. Well, I think she'll be feeling slightly happier than Nafi Tiam at the end of that high jump, Dan. Well, that's outstanding jumping. She's only one centimeter off her season best. It was interesting. It's, it's tough to come down from a real successful jump. And it looked like she was very pleased with 195 and then just tried to make too many changes at 198. That's a mental adjustment that she has to make. If she wants to go any higher, if she wants to jump in the two meter range, she needs to be able to mentally adjust and stay aggressive, stay in the competition. And I just didn't see her quite as connected to that competition as I did on some of the earlier heights. Katarina Johnson Thompson and Nafi Tiam. Championship best performances, 195, nine centimeters better than Bugard, who was third. Prina, 177 down the bottom, season's bests for Brursen and Kunz. A lifetime best for Oostvegel with 177. Hannah Morton's down at 171, but the two favourites for gold with excellent jumps there. 195 would be there or thereabouts on any Diamond League individual high jump. Katarina Johnson-Thompson leads by 40 points with Bugard third and Williams still riding high after that exceptional 100 hurdles. So we've had the hurdles, we've had the high jump. A compare and contrast from the top three at the moment. And Johnson Thompson will certainly be the happier of the two favourites, you would think, after two events. And quick question, Dan, how significant is the javelin going to be? We know Tiam and KJT can both produce brilliant long jump competitions. Maybe is the javelin going to be the difference, perhaps? Well, it certainly could be. Nafi's right elbow is a mystery to us all very much like laura muir we didn't know what to expect i don't think we know what to expect until she picks up a javelin and starts throwing it however it is the last competition of the year and i think she would throw her arm out on the last competition of the year to win the world championships you know we have we do have the olympics next year i you know i certainly don't want her to injure herself but i think she would risk i think she would risk some things just a little bit to come home with another title we're into the early stages of the heptathlon shot, but then here's Verena Priner of Austria. Well, she comes in with a 1465 personal best. We see a number of these heptathletes use the glide technique, lines at 14 and 16 meters. This is the better throwing group, certainly. You see lines out there to 14 and 16. The other group will have lines at 12 and 14. Nathi Theum will be in the group with the lines out there, 14 and 16. She's an outstanding shot putter, but Preener here waits for her mark. Interestingly, Katarina Johnson-Thompson is a couple of meters down on Nafi Fee, and the shot is not a KJT forte necessarily. She's a just over a 13 meter thrower compared to Tiam, who's a 15 and a half meter thrower. And there's 14-21 for Preener. She leads, she leads the group A right now. And here's Johnson-Thompson.
She's over 12 meters, not bad. Doesn't look too happy with it. She never looks happy with too much. She looks happy with that lifetime best in the hurdles earlier on. That's about the happiest I've seen her look out on the field without winning a medal. Well, she certainly has the power and the build to be a good shot putter. She's got to hold that shot put back just a little bit. Uses her legs very, very well. Got to work on that stretch reflex and give us a big yell. 12.33 for KJT as we see Tiam in the first round. Lifetime best, 15.52. There's a good looking throw, well over the 14 meter line. But you see what she does really well. She moves her lower body, holds her upper body back. That's the way she's able to get so much more on the shot put. That shot put has got to travel with you you can't punch it out there. You've got to wait till the last second. Use the body, not the arm. Whoosh. That shot puts a sound like a whooshing sound as it leaves. And Theon, 15-22. No surprise that she's out over the 15-meter mark. This is Katrina Johnson Thompson. Katrina Johnson Thompson produced uh, just under her lifetime best in the first round. And that didn't look to be too much of an improvement, maybe marginal. She looked pretty uh, hacked off, for want of a better phrase, with her first round effort. So you see the uh, distance come in for Johnson Thompson. It was a marginal improvement, 12 metres and 38. Nadine Brusson in Group A. 14.21 on her first attempt, outstanding throw for her and she's over the 14 meter line again probably in the 14 30s coaches up in the stands love to predict that stuff her season best 1476 she certainly has more to give well across both pools the uh, leading throw for the first round was Nafi Tiam who is the best putter in the heptathlon field so no massive surprise just to give you some context Katarina Johnson Thompson after the first round was down as the 15th ranked across the uh, the two pools this is pool A which is why you can't see Johnson Thompson's name on it TM 1522 and Brawson 1439 here is a US flag and it's on Kendall Williams in the shot put had a brilliant hurdles earlier on here she is in the shot 1271 on her first attempt 1255 on her second attempt She ran an outstanding hurdles to start the competition. One of the best heptathlon hurdle races I ever saw, but I got a chance to see Jessica Ennis in London run that world record in the heptathlon, and I knew she was off and running. Just got that whole stadium, 10 o'clock in the morning, full, not one empty seat, and her introduction was absolutely amazing. Kendall Williams waits for the mark. Kendall Williams at her best is a 13.55 thrower. Inside that, 12.71. So, uh, in fact, tying what she produced in the first round, as we see Katarina Johnson-Thompson in round three. Well, Katarina Thompson-Johnson, 12.33, 12.38. Certainly room for improvement here. Needs to be nudging towards that 14-meter line, doesn't she, really, to reduce the gap between herself and Tiam in this particular event. That's a better throw, absolutely, out towards the 14-meter mark. She really got behind that one a little bit more. You saw it stretch her hand and her fingers. That's where the shot put needs to come off, the fingertips. And right away, when that thing lands, she knows it. You can see a smile just starting to creep into her face. It got the <laughs> shot got lower and lower to the ground. And now she doesn't believe it. The mark, 1386. Smashed her lifetime best. Nice. A second huge PB of the uh, of the evening. 71 centimeters she added <laughs> there to her lifetime best. Well, Katarina Johnson-Thompson is having a fine opening day of this World Championship head tap as we go back to Curry Hawkins of the US in round three. Best so far of 13 metres 59.
this uh, third and final put. Well, she's over the 12 meter mark. Sherry Hawkins, 1359. She wants an improvement. Did not like it. You could see she really came away from the ball. Ball went to the right. Her body went to the left. No power behind it. She'll have to settle for 13.59. So wait for the measurement to come up for Cherie Hawkins, 12.93. So that uh, keeps her in fourth position in Group B. Well, that's her coach, Sheila Burrell, who is the head coach at San Diego State University. Sheila Burrell made a number of international teams and won numerous U.S. championships. Advised by the best, Erica Bugard then of the US in Pool B, a lifetime best of 13.02, which she hasn't got close to so far in this comp. Wow, barely over the 12 meter mark. She has just looked a little bit off all day long. The hurdles weren't really up to her standards. Her high jump was good, but it wasn't great. She ducks out of that throw. And you're right, she should be over 13 meters. Nothing going right here in the heptathlon for Erica Bugard so far. So she it will appear will stay down in ninth position when that uh, distance is confirmed. Now we go to Nadine Brewson, who's one of the strongest shot putters, and we can see her on the coattails of Nafi Thiam in this particular pool. Heading out towards uh, 15 meters, a bit further. She's trying a better 14.39. She got behind that one really well. And you know when she challenges the toe board, when an athlete challenges the toe board, you know it's a really good one. She's trying to improve 14.21, 14.39. As she waits for the measurement, they've been just a little bit slow on the measurements. I think they're building up the drama. <laughs> they certainly are. She's seen it. Uh, and now we see it. 14.75. So it is an improvement for Brusson, and that will get her upwards to about 840 points for this event. That'll be TM in the final round. She's trying to improve on 15.22. Certainly the best shot putter in the group. That's over the 15-meter line. But how far? I was talking to Rob about how distracting it is down there on the infield, on that D zone. There's so much going on. People running races around you. The crowd is a long ways away. Your coach is a long ways away. It's hard to find a level of comfort, find your rhythm. But what these athletes need to do is stand off to the side, continue to do your footwork drills. And that's what I noticed when I saw Daniel Stahl doing all that footwork over there in the men's disc as he was staying warm, but he was continuing to put the positive motions and affirm himself of the positions so that when you are when you are separated from your coach when things are going on around you you can lock in and do exactly what you need to do in the ring let's wrap up how things finish then this is the composite from both pools together Nafi Tiam 876 points for her 1522 Katarina Johnson Thompson a huge lifetime best adding 70 centimeters there which lifted her up to 785 points Lifetime best two for Cherie Hawkins, uh, down in the 12th position there. Just joining us, Ivona Dadic uh, pulled up in the hurdles and unfortunately had to withdraw from the competition, which is a, a real shame for her. And we're going to give you the overall picture after three events of the uh, uh, heptathlon and for the first time in the competition, Nafi Tiam has edged herself in front. Well, with that 51 point lead, it's just so she's just so strong in the high jump and the shot put, and we'll see her do the same exact thing tomorrow with that long jump and the javelin. You know, she's just exceptional in four or five out of the seven. You don't have to, you don't have to be awesome in all seven, but you, when you're awesome in a couple, it makes such a big difference. There you see the point totals and, and where they got their points. A better shot put for Nafi Theum. Now we see the athletes, the heptathletes, come out for their final event of day one, the 200 meters. Their sprint test, they've already been over the sprint barriers to open their competition earlier on, the 100 hurdles. And now we'll see them on the 200 metres flat. There are three heats in this 
women's 200 metres. And as you can see at the bottom of your picture there, Nafi Tiam goes in the first of those. Katarina Johnson-Thompson will go in the last of them. And Johnson-Thompson has uh, got about a second and a half on Tiam in this event. Yeah, their personal bests are definitely different. Naf Nafi, T Nafi Thiam is in this first heat because she's not the best 200 meter runner. This is an area that she can definitely improve in. There you see your season best 24.55, personal best 24.40. I think to break that European record, to break that world record at some point, she would definitely have to get into the low to mid 23s, especially with all the other things that she does really, really well. But the 200 meters is, is a challenging race for somebody who doesn't do it all the time. Very, uh, very difficult from a fitness standpoint. But also, it, it's, it's a race that you have to have a strategy and a race plan if you're not a 21 or a 22 second, 22 second, 200 meter runner. These young ladies are going to work extremely hard for the times, for the times that they are given. Well, Nafi Tiam is a, a great story. She still trains with her longtime training group in Belgium. She can't. She basically trains a lot of her running events on her own because the women in her training group are too slow and the men are too fast, and she finds herself. She stayed with her a home comforts, if you like, in Belgium, rather than moving off maybe overseas to join a, a training group of more rounded ability of people similar to her. How difficult would that be that she has to train maybe not with people who are pushing her directly? Well, a number of us multi-event athletes, you know, we train in isolation. You know, it's just, it's. I remember there were times when it was just myself and two coaches, and we almost prefer it that way. We can get a lot more done. I lived in a very small town so that I didn't, get distracted by uh, by you know nightclubs and and different things like that so uh, I, I don't think it's at a disadvantage you're able to really get into a, a work mentality each and every day when you're in that situation would you like a training partner sure you know you could ask one of the guys to slow down just a bit and uh, and you know and run with you but you know she's lucky that she does actually have people to train with well she's joining lane six in this uh, first of three heats in the women's 200 meters heptathlon Right on the outside, Emma Oosterbegel of the Netherlands. As Dan mentioned, these 200-meter heats are seeded on uh, lifetime best, so the stronger heat is the last of the three to go, as we see Katarina Kacheva of the Czech Republic, whose best is 24.1. Nafi Tiam's best is 24.4, where it says world ranking one. That's in the heptathlon rather than in the heptathlon 200 meters. Geraldine Ruckstuhl of Switzerland goes in lane five. Then we see Voronina, Ekaterina Voronina of Uzbekistan. And on the inside, Nadine Brorsen, who is overall fourth at the moment. Remember, if you're just joining us, Nafi Tiam is 55 points, uh, rather 51 points ahead of Katarina Johnson Thompson. Annie Kuntz of the USA currently in third, just a single point ahead of Nadine Brorsen. And Erica Bugar, 30 odd points further back in fifth. This will be a competitive race for Nafi Theom. She has Emma Oosterweigel on the outside, and they have almost identical personal best. She'll be able to use Emma to help her gauge where she's at in this run. So, heat one of the women's 200 meters heptathlon. <laughs> so, we'll keep an eye on the clock here with Nafi Theom to see how close she can get to her lifetime best of. 24-4. Coming up on the inside of Kacheva. Brusson right on the inside. The Netherlands also going well. But Navi Tiam leading the way at the moment. Keep an eye on the clock. Her lifetime best 24.4, remember. And it's just outside that. 24-61 for Navi Tiam. Takes victory in the first of the women's 200 heptathlon heats. Well, that was a nice run for Nafi. I thought she was going to cross the line and we were going to see a little bit faster because she was really active in that last 100 meters. It took her a few strides to get going, but she made up the stagger in no time at all on Kachova just to her outside, and she made the turn, and she was really working hard. I'd like to see her stand up just a little bit. Good sprinter, stand up a little bit. Helps you create a little bit more distance on each stride. Bounce just a little bit as well down that home straight. But she had great turnover. She had great tempo. And that's so, so important in the 200 meters. 
find your rhythm, find your tempo. She pushes out of the blocks very well. She's got extremely long stride, and she's able to gobble up some distance to Kachova on the outside. She came to the 100 meters, and she was ahead. And here you see her go to another gear. She's turning it over, turning it over, but she's nice and steady, consistent on that rhythm. One, two, one, two, one, two. And to run fast, you've got to be aware of your rhythm. Not a bad time, just nice and solid for Nas Nafi Theum. She'll get around 926 points for that uh, Nafi Theum with that 24.60 timing in heat number one. 924 points, in fact, for that. Catch of 891 points in second place. So you see confirmation there. Voronina, 25.03. She'll take 884 points for that. The second of the heptathlon 200 meter heats. Selena and, and Dharma, training partner of Katarina Johnson Thompson and Kevin Mayer. Nurwitz of Belgium is in lane seven. 24 1 1, her best. Inside her, her teammate, Hannah Mortens. Just inside her teammate's lifetime best. Annie Kuntz, bronze medal overall position going into this event. We're going to get close to her lifetime best of 24-27. Anouk Veta, we saw her teammate Brusson run pretty well in that previous heat. She goes in lane four. Cherie Hawkins. Lane three, she's a very happy character, Cherie Hawkins, isn't she? Smiling and waving, and finally we'll see Maria Huntington of Finland in lane two. Well, this, grabs then, sorry, Dan. this race is going to be very competitive because only two and a half tenths separate oh, all these much. competitors on their personal best and seasonal bests. Well, this one is well seeded. So let's see who can make inroads. Kuntz looking to move herself a little bit further away from the chasing pack in fourth and fifth overall going into this event. Who were Brawson and Bugard, her closest pursuer. Cherie Hawkins and Dharma in the overall standings, but also in this heat. <laughs> so away they go. Annie Kunz in lane five in the blue of the USA. But it's at this stage, Mordens of Belgium and right on the outside, and Dharma of France. Hannah Mordens, the inside of the two Belgian athletes at this stage. Moving comfortably, and Dharma just started to tie up inside her Vetter, and also Kunz is finishing well as well. Mordens takes it, 23.81 for Hannah Mordens. That is a big lifetime best for her, taking three tenths off it. I was hoping somebody would be able to dip under 24 flat. Mordens was the one to do it. She really attacked that turn. She made up that stagger in no time at all, and I, she made a nice transition. You need to make a transition from running a turn to the straight, you want to stand up a little bit more. Fantastic running, nice domination there. Good running all the way through the field there from uh, Andama and from Kunz and Vetter, who probably is a bit disappointed with that what she's produced there. But Vitz coming in fifth and Huntington sixth, and Andama 24-34, and that will uh, keep her right in the hunt for the medals as it stands. Huntington just showing the uh, effects of a long day, four well, events down. It's not an easy race either. You, you see the sprinters run 200 meters and they breathe a little bit and they walk off the track. But for somebody who's not as conditioned as those 200 meter sprinters, this is a very taxing run. If you and I went out and ran on all out 200, we would fall to our knees. <laughs> <laughs> I'd fall to my knees after about 100, that is for sure. But the beautiful overhead shot from our cameras here inside the Khalifa Stadium, bringing you angles that you've never seen before here on our coverage of the IAAF World Championships. Shows a great shot there of the athletes scrambling for those second positions in every single fraction of a second, which equates to a point that could be the difference between a medal or not. And 999 for Hannah Mordens, just under that magic 1,000. The last of the heptathlon heats in the 200 metres before these athletes can go off and get themselves rested up and ready for day two. As we see Ahunawanu on the outside for Benin in lane eight. This is the strongest of the three heats, remember, on lifetime best. Marta Koala of Burma goes in lane seven. Verena Priner of Austria in six, world rank number three this year in the heptathlon. 
the sub-24 second runner. Erica Bugard of the US, who Dan O'Brien's been saying it's just been a little bit below her best in the events we've seen today. Can she end the day on a high in the 200 metres? And Katarina Johnson-Thompson, whose lifetime best at 22.79, is the best of anybody in this heptathlon field. And finally on the inside, Kendall Williams of the US, 23.5 runner at her best. Remember, Ivona Dadic of Austria pulled out injured earlier on in the competition. Well, this is a good lineup, and I like Kendall Williams being on the inside of Karina Johnson-Thompson. She could pull her to a very fast time, but Johnson-Thompson definitely is the class of the field. She comes in with the, the best seasonal best and the best personal best. Well, Nafi Tiamaremba posted 24.6 in her heat earlier on. What can Katarina Johnson-Thompson do in this final heat? You'd expect her to be significantly quicker. Final heptathlon action of day one. <laughs> so away they go. Johnson-Thompson already up on the inside of Kendall Williams. He's gone racing through that first 75 metres. And Johnson-Thompson into the straight on the inside of her. Williams on the outside, Bugard, but Johnson Thompson here, keep an eye on this clock, 22.79 is the best that she's produced previously, just outside that, 23.09 unofficially with a little bit of a following wind. Well, 23.09, that would be a seasonal best for KJT. She's got to be happy with that. She ran a really solid race while well, we see the world-class sprinters running exceptional times. Thought that heptathletes and the decathletes could take advantage of it. They did in the hurdles, but the 200, everybody's just right around their personal best. But you see what makes Johnson Thompson such a formidable opponent. She just pushes. She's one of those athletes. I'm sure even when she was little, this happened. But when the gun goes off, something inside of her just says, get to the front. And she just works really hard. She eats up the stagger on Erica Bogard. And then it's all just tempo and rhythm one two one two one two you're like a metronome with 100 meters to go turnover 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 all the way to the line look at the determination there she's relaxed in the shoulders but she's swinging her arms from the shoulders keeping her arms slightly bent i do a lot of sprint training for kids and that's the first thing i tell them how to swing their arms hip pockets up to the eye sockets and she's doing a great job of it well, it's eyeballs out, isn't it, in the heptathlon? Because every mini part of a second can count for points. Ran right through the line, Katarina Johnson-Thompson. And using the confidence that she built up in the previous events on day one as well. 23.08's got her 1,071 points. Ahead of Kendall Williams, 23.62 alongside her. And Erica Bugard there, she picked up 991 points for her third place. We'll tell you how it all stands very shortly after four events on day one. The athletes now will get themselves off to rest and refuel. And one of the things Katarina Johnson-Thompson commented on about the scheduling here and the fact that it's one, it's longer days rather than a morning and then a rest and then the evening is that she will very much enjoy the day two lion. I'm sure you can subscribe to that theory, Dan, having to scrape yourself out of bed in the morning on day two. Well, I like our schedule as well. We don't start till four in the afternoon most <laughs> days. And I got to sleep in and have breakfast uh, on, a, on occasion, except when you do the preview show. But uh, oh. no, I don't mind the schedule. Well, the only problem with that is if we don't get to bed till about 2 o'clock in the morning. That's right. Time. <laughs> uh, let's tidy up the result then of that final third heat in the women's HEP 200. KJT, 23.08. Kendall Williams, the season's best and a lifetime best for Verena Priner of Austria. We will shortly put all that into our number cruncher and come up with the overall standings for you after four events out of seven. The athletes will come back tomorrow, of course, for the final three events, which are the long jump, the javelin, and the 800 metres. And the javelin, I heard you talking with Rob earlier on, the, Dan, just before I came to relieve Rob of his duties, the javelin, we think, could be the one that could decide it. TM, a much better javelin thrower, but potentially carrying an elbow injury. Well, if she can manage a good throw, then she probably will... she probably will have a great chance to be our world champion. There we see final points 
Katrina Johnson Thompson on top 41 38. She got a 96 point lead over Nafi at this point. 283 point lead. And I knew that it was going to be these two that separated themselves. And they both start tomorrow with arguably their best event. You think that maybe the high jump was their, you know, Nafi's best event? I think the long jump is for both of them. They're going to, they're both, they both need to go well over 660 for big points. But they're going to just keep pulling away from this field. It's a, it's a two woman battle at this point. And worth pointing out as well that they're very, very similar on paper in the long jump. As we said, TM's got a much better javelin, but potentially with a bit of an elbow problem. Katarina Johnson Thompson is a much better 800 meter runner as well. She's seven or eight seconds better. Yeah, so it's a trade off. You know, you're going to get a big javelin from, from Nafi. Same, same long jump, big javelin. And then Johnson Thompson will try to run her down in the 800 meters. And if she's close, she could come away with the championship.